friends, and welcome to the Teen Cemeterium Craft. So what is a cemeterium? Well, it's a cemetery and a terrarium combined. So today we are going to make our cemeteriums similar to what you would see in a regular terrarium, but we're gonna spice it up a little bit for Halloween. If you got your craft kit from one of the local Charlotte County libraries, Inside, you should find some moss, a toothpick, tweezers, a piece of aluminum foil, black polymer clay, white polymer clay, and a bag of gravel. You should also have your instruction sheet on what materials that you would need and how to fill up your jar and also how to bake your polymer clay. What did not come in your kit is a jar. Now you can find any kind of jar that you have lying around the house. This is an old pickle jar that I have cleaned out and repurposed for this craft. So you do not have to go out and buy a jar, but there are plenty of places that you can find some if you would like to do so. But check around your house. Maybe you have another glass jar from pasta sauce or anything else like that that you can clean out. You can scrub off the label that's on the front. And now we have our jar to use for our terrarium. I took an extra step with my jar and I did paint the top black. Um, I just wanted to cover up that it was a pickle jar. This was bright blue so I didn't want that on my Halloween jar. So if you have paint at home, you can definitely paint the top and let that dry. Um, if you don't have paint, that's fine too. You can glue uh, paper over the top. You can use washi tape. Um, and if you have extra moss left over, I'll show you at the end, you can glue some moss to the top of your jar too. So there are different ways that you can cover up what your jar used to be. What does it take to become a zombie? What? Dedication. So our first step is going to be to fill up the jar from the bottommost layer up to the top. So the first material that we're going to need to use is going to be your gravel. So you're going to take the bag of gravel that you were given in your kit, or if you have gravel at home, and I found this small cup to use to help scoop out the gravel from the bag and pour it into my jar without spilling it. But if you do not have a small cup like this at home, you can actually use a piece of paper and make a funnel, or maybe you have a funnel in your house that you can use. Um, so it's pretty simple. What you're gonna do is just roll up the piece of paper. You're gonna make it into a little circle there at the end. And if you have a piece of tape, you can tape that. And the outside there. And this will help so that you aren't uh, just getting gravel all over your workspace and it's actually getting into your jar. This will help open up the top a little bit more for you and give you a little bit more space to pour that gravel in. So let's start with that. And you can put as much gravel as you'd like in there. Um, some of you may have really tall, skinny jars, so you may only want a small amount of gravel. My jar is pretty wide, so I'm gonna try to fill up a, a decent amount of gravel at the bottom. Dump this last part in there. I'm going to use all mine. Use up all that gravel here. So now I have my gravel in my jar and it's a little bit uneven. I kind of like the way that looks. To me, it looks like it would be a hill because remember, we're going to make this to look like a cemetery. So um, now that we have our gravel in, if you would like to move it around, you can use your tweezers, if you can't fit your hand inside of your jar, you can use your tweezers to help move all of those materials around inside. 
So get it to where you want it because you don't want to try to go back after you've added other layers on top of it because then you'll have to take everything out. So make sure you have it the way you want it at the bottom here. The next step is to take your moss and this might be a little bit messy, so don't do it in an area where uh, you're not okay with making a mess. It does shed a little bit, so you're gonna wanna be able to wipe that up after. Um, and you can rip your moss apart. So we're gonna take little pieces of it. We don't wanna put too much moss inside of here, so we'll just add a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna use my tweezers for this too, and we're gonna just kind of push it down where you want the moss to be. And just take small pieces of it. Just add that right in. And I'm just kind of poking it down so that it kind of sticks into the gravel so it doesn't move as much. And you can see that this moss is very puffy. And we wanna make sure that we're gonna be able to see the headstones that we're making. All right, push this down a little bit here. And check it out from the sides too. Don't just look at it from the top because you're gonna be able to see through here like a window. So you wanna make sure that each section looks exactly like you want it to. So now we have our moss. Now we are going to move on to one of the harder steps, but it's okay because I'm gonna go through this with you step by step. So now we are going to be making our headstones. I'm gonna show you how you can make a skull. I'm gonna show you how you can use your clay to make a crow. Um, so your imagination with this can be limitless. You have clay and you can create whatever you would like for your cemeterium. Uh, we are trying to make this Halloween themed, so think of different Halloween things that you could create to put into your cemeterium. What does a vegetarian zombie eat? Grains. For this step, you're going to want to make sure that you are building with your clay on top of your tinfoil sheet or make sure that you're putting it on a surface that will not be stained easily. Black clay may leave some staining on certain surfaces, so make sure that you're not using a nice tablecloth to press the black clay into. Um, that's what you have the tinfoil sheet for. So we are going to be making our clay figures on our tinfoil sheet, and then we are gonna be using this to put into the oven to cook it once we are done. Now, this doesn't look like it's a lot of clay, but I promise that you will be able to make a decent amount with this amount of clay. I made all of these guys here with the amount of clay that you were given, plus there was some left over. So we're gonna break apart a piece of our clay. We don't wanna use all of it at once. So you're gonna break off small pieces and you're just going to squish it together. You wanna squish it up into a ball. You wanna make sure that it's all sticking together so that you don't have any creases inside of your clay. You can roll it in your hands a little bit. You just wanna mix it up together. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make a headstone. So what you're gonna do from your ball of clay is you're just going to pinch it into a square shape. And you can just pinch the edges, pinch the sides. The more you pinch it, the thinner it will get and the bigger that your headstone or a clay piece will be. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So we have a nice shape here. Now for the bottom of the headstone that I made here, this is Edgar Allan Poe's grave with the raven on it. 
and he has a nice little base to his headstone so that it won't fall over as easily inside the cemeterium. So we are going to do the same idea. So what you can do is you can either take another piece of clay and put it along the bottom, or you can just pinch the edges at the bottom here and you can just kind of lay it onto a flat surface until it stands. And your clay won't completely stick to that aluminum foil. So you will be able to pick it up and move it around uh, once you have it stuck on here like this. So make sure that it's standing, that way we know it will stand in our cemeterium. Now once you have the main shape for your headstone, you can use your toothpick to make different uh, designs or write somebody's name on the headstone or uh, write RIP, rest in peace. So I'm going to make some designs on mine. So you can just draw on there with your toothpick. It's really nice. I'm going to put R.I.P. Classic headstone. And when you write letters or make designs inside of the clay, it might have some of the clay just pop out of there a little bit. You can either use your toothpick to just kind of push some of those edges down so it doesn't pop out as much, or you can use your fingers too. Just be careful when you do use your fingers to uh, touch the clay, your fingerprints may actually leave indents in your clay. So just be aware of that too. So we have a nice RIP. Maybe I'll make a little skull on the top of here. Perfect. That's my first headstone there. Now look at all this clay that we still have. So you can continue to make different headstones. You can make different shapes. We're gonna squish up another piece. And I'm gonna show you how to make a skull. So we're gonna roll this up into a ball. So squish it together and then roll it into a ball. You don't want it to be too big or too thick. Remember in the directions for baking the polymer clay, uh, for every quarter inch that your clay is, it is gonna take 15 minutes for it to cook. So now we have our circle shape and I'm gonna show you how to make the skull. So you're gonna take the rounded edge of your toothpick and you're gonna use that to make the holes for the eyes. So it's gonna look similar to this here. So we have one eye here, one eye here. And just be careful where you're pinching around the edges of your skull. And if it's not going the way that you planned, you just simply roll it back up into a ball and try again. So now we have two eyes, real simple. Now we're gonna make the jawline. So I want you to take your thumb and your pointer finger and you're just gonna pinch around the edge there. And you're gonna make it so that it's a little bit pushed in right here. And we have our little jaw sticking out. And you can kind of blend some things around here. It's not gonna be a perfect skull, but it'll look perfect inside of your cemeterium. So now that we have our eyes, you want to make some nostril holes for our skull. So we're going to just use the pointed end of our toothpick and just make some triangles here. There we go. Now he has his nostrils. So what about his mouth? You can add some lines here for where his teeth used to be. 
And there we go, we have our simple skull. If you wanna take more time and make it more detailed, please feel free to do so. I just wanted to show you a simple way that every one of you can make a skull. Where do zombies swim? The Dead Sea. Now we still have more clay. So you can make another tombstone. Squish it together. Maybe you can make this one in a different shape. I'm gonna turn this one into an obelisk shape. Maybe a little bit pointed at the top here. A little bit more complicated. If you want it to be completely flat, you can push down onto your aluminum foil. So don't be afraid to use this aluminum foil sheet. It might even give you some cool textures onto your clay. Pointy. We're gonna do the same thing. Just kind of push down until you see it stand up. You can use your fingers to just push those edges down here. And just lift off the top so that it doesn't stay stuck down onto your aluminum foil sheet. So now that we have finished all of our headstones, I'm gonna show you how to make this raven. If you do not want to make this raven, that is perfectly fine. I just wanted to show you that you can add another little touch to your cemeterium. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did when we started our headstones. You're gonna take a piece of black clay and you're gonna roll it into a ball. You don't want to use too much clay because you don't want your bird to be two times as big as your headstone. You want it to make it look like he belongs there. So we're going to roll this up. Now, I know this looks very daunting and looks like it's very difficult, but I promise I'm going to do this as simple as I possibly can. You're gonna take your round piece of clay and I want you to take your toothpick and just make a line about a third around the top. Just kind of give yourself a little separation so you can just draw a line around the top of your clay. And this is gonna be the head of your bird. Now for his beak, you're gonna pinch the front of his face until it's pointy. You have a nice little pointy beak here. And you can smooth that out a little bit. So now you have the rounded part of his head. And you can use your tools, you don't have to use just your fingers. And don't forget that you have that rounded part on the end where you can just smooth out some of the areas around his face. You don't wanna to push too much or he'll lose that rounded shape of his head. All right, so there we have a simple beak shape. Now we want them to have wings. So we are going to take our toothpick again and on the side of him, you're gonna just make a curved line. You're gonna draw his wing in. So you're gonna just take this, kind of draw a C on the side. Okay, so now he has a little wing on that side. We're gonna draw one on the other side. And you can try to make it as close to the other side as possible. So now we have a wing on each side. 
because now he needs a tail, right? So you're gonna do the same thing that we did with his beak and you're going to pinch the back of your bird and you're gonna flatten that out a little bit to make it look like he has a nice tail. Similar to this here. Now you can start doing all the little details. That wasn't too hard, but if you need to, you can always rewind and go over it again. So on the little parts of the wing here, I'm going to make some triangles to make it look like he has feathers on his wings. So you can just do little rows like this. I know that's hard to see on camera. But we're just making some little triangles here. And I would do maybe two or three rows. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Some triangle feathers. wipe away some of the excess that you've carved out. So we have feathers on that side. You can make some lines of feathers on his tail, just some straight lines along the back so that he has some tail feathers there. And what about his eyes? So you can do the same thing. You can make two little you can take your toothpick and you can actually just poke little holes in his face like that on each side. So now he has little eyes. If you want to go even more detail, you can make a little line on his beak. So you can add as much detail or as little detail as you'd like for your crow. Now, if you want him to be connected to one of your headstones, what you can do is pick which headstone that you would like for him to sit on. And you're going to make some lines for where you are going to stick him on. So underneath, you're going to make some lines here. Some cross hatching is what it's called. And you're going to do the same thing on the spot where you want him to be sitting on your tombstone. Right on top here. So you're going to make lines in one direction and then lines in the other direction. So horizontally and vertically. I'll show you what that looks like. And it doesn't have to be perfect. The reason for this is the clay will stick together easier once you have that cross hatching in place, you just kind of smush those two together. And now they'll be sitting perfectly on top. You can make sure that it still stands. So maybe if it's a little too top heavy in one direction, you can just kind of push them towards one direction or the other, or maybe make your base a little bit wider. Remember, just kind of pinch at the bottom there until it stands. And you should have a little bit of black clay left over, so if you want to, you can make another raven or even another tombstone or other grave site. Just remember that when you're making all of your cemetery pieces, that the clay is very forgiving. You can always roll it back up and try again if you don't like what you have created. If you would like to save the clay, if you've run out of time to create your different headstones, you can put it back in the Ziploc bag and save it for later. The clay will stay very well for a very long period of time inside of the Ziploc bag or other airtight container. If you do leave it out in the open, it will start to harden and then it will be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Uh, uh. 
Once you have all of your designs finished, you want to keep them on this aluminum sheet. If you'd like to have a little bit more stability underneath, you can put the aluminum foil on top of a cookie sheet that you have at home. You are going to set your oven at 275 degrees, and once it is preheated to 275 degrees, you can put your clay pieces inside of the oven and make sure you set a timer for 15 minutes. You can check on it before the 15 minutes is up just to make sure that you don't see any browning happening on your clay. If you cook it for too long, it will start to burn and get that brown instead of white coloring on the clay. You don't have to leave them standing up either. You can actually lay them flat if you think that they're not going to stand up straight. Just be careful that you're not squishing it into a different shape before you put it into the oven. Once it comes out of the oven, it will be hard, so you won't be able to make any changes at that time. So we're gonna put all of these towards the center of the sheet here. And one of the tricks that I learned with working with polymer clay is to actually cover up the clay. And again, make sure that you're not squishing any of the pieces inside of your aluminum foil. You want to kind of make a pocket for them to cook in. And this will keep your clay from being in direct contact with the heat of your oven. And it will help it to bake more evenly over time. And again, to prevent any of that burning from happening. So once you have your clay covered up and your oven is preheated, Stick that in the oven or toaster oven for 15 minutes. Once it is finished cooking, do not immediately touch your polymer clay. It is going to be very hot, so make sure that you let it cool off before you handle it again. All right, after you get all of your clay safely out of the oven and let it cool off, then you're ready to put all of your pieces inside of your cemeterium. So you're gonna take your jar and find the first piece that you wanna put in. You can use your tweezers for this. Kinda of just grab that there. You can push it down into the moss a little bit. That way it'll stay in place and not jostle around too much. You might wanna start with some of the bigger pieces first and then put the smaller pieces around it. And they don't have to be sticking straight up out of the ground. If you've been to any old cemeteries, sometimes you see that they're kind of starting to fall to one side or the other. Stick those down in here. All right, now last, we have our nice little skull out in the front here. You're gonna put the lid on, let's just look at that. All right, so now if you do have some extra moss left over, you can glue some of that to the top if you have any glue on hand at home. Just make sure that you don't put any glue into the uh, creases of your jar lid. You don't want to glue your lid completely shut. So we're gonna get some glue and just put some glue on the top of your jar lid, wherever you want there to be moss. Just add a little bit here. Make it a little bit spooky. Just gonna add it to wherever we have some glue down. Just rip tiny pieces so that it sticks nice to the glue on top. Perfect. Pretty neat. And if you had any extra clay left over, you can always add some little decorations to the top of your jar too. Again, use your imagination and decorate it with whatever materials that you have around the house.
Now I'm gonna be the devil on your shoulder for just a minute and try to push you a little bit further into creating a little bit more for your cemeterium craft. There are plenty of items that you have laying around your house or even by taking a walk outside, you may find some things that might add to your cemetery. So I was thinking, what kind of elements do we have in a cemetery besides just headstones or skulls or ravens? What other things can we add? So the first thing I thought of was a creepy tree. So maybe there is a twig outside that you can find that looks like a creepy tree. I really liked this one. This I think is from a palm tree and it has a nice little curl there. So I liked that, kind of like Nightmare Before Christmas. I also went outside to find something that I could use to make a fence. So sometimes in cemeteries, the graves have a fence around it. So I picked up a couple sticks and broke them up. And then I did have some jewelry wire that I used to just tie these little pieces of twigs together. But you could use a string, you can use uh, dental floss if you have dental floss or if you wanted to you don't have to make a fence out of it where they are connected maybe you just take a few sticks and place them side by side around in your cemeterium to make it look like a fence another thing I found that was pretty neat to do is to get hairspray so some of you may have hairspray at home or maybe your parents have some hairspray and I just used that and I sprayed it onto the moss. And I had an extra packet of glitter left over from one of my other crafts. And I just sprinkled that on top of the moss so it gets a nice little shine to it. And then I also had an idea of some other little creepy things that we can put in there. You could make a little ghost or hand sticking out from your cemetery. So this is just a regular piece of paper. If you want to, you can use the paper that came with your cemetery and materials and use that to cut out different shapes for ghosts or hands or other little creepy things, or maybe even make some extra gravestones with the paper. And so I just drew a little ghost based on him and he can just be placed straight down into the moss in your cemetery. So think of different things that you would find in a cemetery. Use your imagination and your creativity and create some extra things to add some more ambiance to our cemetery scene. And now you've completed your creepy Halloween cemetery.